part of my Christmas gifts from Sean were these two Dutch ovens. He got them at Costco. If I can find a link or anything, I will link them below. But they are two different sizes. They're enameled, I think. But I want to use them. So I'm going to make a Toscana, Tos Toscana soup for dinner and then I'm going to make some bread. So that's what we're going to work on today. I'm going to make it in my little guy or maybe my big guy. I'm not sure yet. I guess it depends on how much this makes. I've never made Dutch oven bread before. So my oven preheating over here to like 200-ish degrees because it's not very warm in here and I want to make sure that my dough rises. I have to find I would love to say this is an old family recipe or some crap, but it's not. <laughs> so uh, a cup and a half of warm water, a packet of yeast, some salt. Um, it says not iodized. And some flour, which is over here that you can't see. So I've got some pink Himalayan sea salt that we can missing its bottom. Where is its bottom? Welcome to my kitchen. Nothing's ever in order. These things are super cool by the way. For my salt and pepper shakers. They even have like little lights that you can do and there's different um, coarseness in there. Not that you can see that very well. We'll link these down below. I got them off Amazon. Can't get away from the Bezos bargains, right? Pour too much, dump it out. There's too little, fill it up. There's too much. Welcome to my ADHD kitchen. So we are going to cut open the yeast packet. Stolen my good kitchen scissors again. Would not be the first, certainly will not be the last. I haven't baked with yeast since, um, gosh, 2020. <laughs> when we were all baking our own bread for a while. Oh, sweet memories. Now we're going to pour in our water. I'm gonna add some salt because. While this thing is definitely awesome, it does not produce the, the most it's like little dashes. Okay. Let's see how like when you push the button, it lights up. <laughs> and I like the little bottom covers because then you can just grate it into there without having to worry about anything coming out. And I mean, you can measure it better that way too, but I measure with my heart in my kitchen. Now we will stir, stir, stir until everything is well combined and dissolved. And then we are going to need regular no-name unbleached flour. It looks yeasty enough, right? <laughs> okay. Now this part it says don't worry about mixing it too much. You just want to get a sticky dough. So this is my 
container from Costco, which I like, kind of, <laughs> but I've made a mess, so. That's not on Costco though, that's, that's all me. Just being the messy damn person I am. I preheat my oven to like 200 degrees, um, just so I have a place to put this stuff so it grows and whatever the heck that's called. <laughs> Becomes a ball. This is not the baking process yet, by the way. Simply adding it all together. <laughs> that's that'll that'll be a problem for another time. All right. I am in a drier climate right now, so I might need to add a little more water. My hands are clean, by the way. You didn't see me wash them before this video, but I did. I did wash them. So it says to mix until a sticky dough appears that is like uniformly more or less mixed. So, kind of along with um, my channel and name, it's just mild progress. And I don't need to knead this. I'm just, I'm specifically just trying to get all of this extra flour on the sides. It's very sticky. Oh, baking. That activity you do, you clean your entire kitchen so you have a clean surface to bake on and then, um, you know, you ruin it by making another mess. Ta-da! <laughs> Gently wipe our mistakes away. <laughs> Unlock my phone and see what the next steps are because I have no idea what I'm doing. We are learning together. So definitely didn't come prepared, just had to go locate a towel for this. So, it doesn't say to keep the towel wet. You know, usually like when you want things to dry, as you keep them wet. So we're just gonna stick that into our 200-ish degree oven. And, okay Google. Set a timer for two hours. Okay, two hours. And that's starting now. Tell me below, what's um, a virtual helper here in your house? What kind of voice do you use on it? We used to have a guy's voice that I really liked and then Sean changed it to this, um, I think it said it's an Australian voice lady. And it says 30 minutes to an hour before you are ready to bake, preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit with your Dutch oven inside so it gets warm. Okay, we got about 20 minutes left till this is ready. I just pulled it out of the oven. Now I'm going to preheat my oven to 450. I'm going to leave this in the oven completely empty. Heat it up. Dinner prep. Now, even though it's kind of early, but whatever. As you can see here, it's definitely doubling. It's still nice and warm. We'll keep that going. So we need some Italian sausage, pepper flakes, bacon, onion, garlic, chicken stock. Potatoes, kale, heavy whipping cream, salt and pepper, and then I also bought, thought they were garbanzo beans, but they are butter beans. So here I'm just peeling my garlic. Um, I start getting all the vegetables and that shenanigans ready. Although in retrospect, I might have done that a little too soon. 
Um, I don't know why I decided to film myself peeling garlic. It's probably the most inefficient way <laughs> anyone could ever do it. Um, but yeah, welcome to my life. That's the way we do things here. <laughs> so we're peeling, we're peeling, sort of. Has anyone tried that hack where you're supposed to put it in like a container and shake it and the peels just like come off or something like magic? Witchcraft? Is it witchcraft, guys? Let me know. Yeah, I'm... I'm excelling at life here. Like, these are my finer moments, that's for sure. Peeling the little baby ones. By the way, I'm watching a Stephanie Harlow video on my phone, if you can see the itty bitty little screen up at the top of my uh, phone there. Now it's time to prep the onion. Um, I have this really cool thing you're gonna see in a second. It's like a, it's a food processor, but it's a manual food processor and it helps so much when I have to dice things pretty small, especially onions. It contains the smell. Um, you see that little whole spout thing? Yeah, I'm just showing it to you. Anyway, um, that's the only annoying part. Like, pieces like to fly out there. I don't know why I didn't put my garlic in with the other, you know, the onion, whatever. It is what it is. Cutting off all the hard little, like, stem parts of the garlic here. And I realized real quick, I am using a serrated knife trying to chop. Um, zero out of ten would not recommend, so I got a better tool for it. I need suggestions for knives because these were like this $20 set that I got at Target when I first um, left my ex. And while they serve the purpose and they do great, I want some adult knives now. <laughs> I want real knives. I want to invest in some. So give me your suggestions. I'm open to everything. All right, there's a big hot bowl of water. Oh, I'm making broth. I see. That's um, better than bouillon. It's like this bouillon jelly stuff that you put into boiling water. Stir it up, dissolve it, turns into broth, which is what you need for this recipe. Um, left a big wet spot on my counter there. I guess I didn't see it. Uh, yes, and then we put flour right on top of it. Good job, Becky. That's... Man, aren't you so... Ooh, that looks rough. But it, it really turned out great, honestly. Um, in retrospect, I probably should have put some flour or something in that bowl so it didn't stick. Maybe a little bit of oil. I don't know. I'll keep you updated next time I try. Now I'm over there cooking. Um, I don't. I don't know why I kept this in and didn't edit it out. <laughs> I'm committed now. I, I can't stop. Yeah, clean up that mess except for that one spot where you left water and then dumped flour on it, Becky. I'm a good housekeeper. Man, look at me go trash everywhere, pulling potatoes out. Turning my phone back on. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, so you don't necessarily have to cut your potatoes to any particular size. I just kind of cubed them. I was going for like half an inch to an inch pieces. The smaller your pieces, obviously the faster it will cook. Um, you don't really put them in until the very end. I also forgot to mention that I put the bread in already. I don't know why I didn't film that. With people walking around me and I don't like talking to myself. So I'm working through that. <laughs> I do eventually like change the angle that I'm Filming. 
I'm not very good at voiceovers, guys. <laughs> Does anyone else just hang out in the kitchen the entire time they're cooking? I also had Sean coming in and out, talking to me. Um, this is heavy whipping cream, by the way, and it ends up being a huge mess on on my cutting board. I need another cutting board, I think. <laughs> See, there it goes, spilling over the edge. Moving it around, it just keeps going, whatever. All right, so I got a big thing of kale. I shouldn't say a big thing, it's just one bunch of kale. Um, and I'm just making room for it because I have read and seen everywhere that you're supposed to massage your kale, massage your kale. The more you massage your kale, the better it is or something. I don't even remember where I heard that, but I know I've heard it a bunch roughly chopping it, coarsely chopping it. Is that the word I'm looking for? I don't know. <laughs> but you'll see in this video, I um, go back to massaging it a bunch. And I don't know if it was absolutely necessary because it, I mean, it was good in the, the soup, but you know, it gets soggy and wet once it's in the soup and you cook it down a bunch. I don't know. Someone who's more qualified, answer. Answer me, please. Do you need to massage your kale if you're putting it into a soup? Like, what situation should I be massaging kale? See? There it goes. It's the best massage I've ever given in my life. <laughs> and then these are the beans that I thought were garbanzo beans, but are butter beans. And I didn't realize how big these things were. I was cracking up. I'm like, they're so big. And then I got the brilliant idea to just cut them in half. They were freaking me out that they were so big because I'm, I'm weird about textures and that kind of stuff. I love beans, but I thought maybe if I cut them in half, it would satisfy my brain a little bit more. <laughs> So just cutting my beans in half. There were a lot of like skins in there and I didn't I don't like the skins. Talking to, to Sean at that point, you gotta give your, your tongs a couple good solid clicks before you use them, right? That's what I was doing there. I realized I was like cooking and not doing anything over here. So in a minute, you will see that I adjust my camera. I'm putting all of my stuff in over there, which I'm so frustrated that I didn't show you. There we go. So I just added the garlic and the um, onion. I took the bacon out to drain it. Um, I switched my my burner because I realized that it was a terrible angle. Um, checking on my bread, had to take the lid off for a final like five or ten minutes, I don't remember exactly. I'll link all the recipes I use down below by the way guys, if you're interested. I don't know if I said that. So now that those are nice and cooked, I added, oh and there's my love bug hugging me. I'm adding everything kind of one at a time, mixing it together. You're supposed to bring it up to a boil. It was a lot of fun to cook with these um, Dutch ovens. I hope everyone's enjoying my, my uh, sandals with my socks. <laughs> it's quite the look. Yeah, so this is when I added the potatoes. This, I think, was the longest part um, when it comes to adding everything all together. I think I ended up adding some more water to this, or no? Maybe not. That's the cream. That's my crumbled up bacon. And I don't, I'm guessing that was just more bacon. <laughs> bacon, bacon, bacon. Stir it all together. And I'm like, why am I using a spatula? I should be using a spoon. Those are my beans that I'm putting in and my kale, which looks like a giant forest, but I promise it all cooks down together in the end. 
What an amazing video this is. There we go. I knew I added more water in there. I was like, it doesn't look like there's enough. <laughs> so now I'm just waiting, cleaning as I go, more or less. Um, I'm not very good at cleaning, but I tried. You can see on my floor, I got stuff everywhere. <sighs> you can see that the uh, kale cooked down. And I had tested it with a fork, my um, potatoes, before you saw this. So I was pretty happy. I tried it. I was like, oh my gosh, this tastes amazing. I cannot wait to eat it. Oh, I love it. Okay, so I'm supposed to get this out of here and put it on a wire rack. Um, I don't have a wire rack. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna put this on. God, it's so crusty and stiff, but it, oh, it's gonna be a We'll just do a beautiful plate. Okay. Ah, yes. Aesthetic AF. <laughs> Crocker. Okay, so this is just me finalizing the cooking. Like I said, I poked it with a fork. Now I'm cutting into the bread for the first time. Oh my god, it smells so good. Um, in hindsight, I need to add more salt to this. Um, I could not taste salt at all. But overall, it was delicious with the soup. The soup was so filling, so hearty. Definitely give it a try.